Today I'm going to build this hub up with a shorter spoke so that we can tension up a wheel with the drill. But I'm also going to talk a little bit more about Shimano lacing rear disc hubs. Now the difference with the way that I lace up Shimano rear disc hubs is I like to have both spokes installed in the two holes adjacent to the rim hole. Okay. Uh, now, I've done it here, but it's uh, not very clear, so I redid that. So here we go, like usually there would be a hub logo to align, but on this one we don't have one, so it just makes it a little easier. Now, we just insert a key spoke. You would count over a few hub holes from the hub logo so that you could align it properly when you twist it, but we don't have to do that. Here we go, and you can see that the holes are offset on the opposite side, so on the disc side. And what we want to do is grab the one to the left of the key spoke, and then in the reverse direction, which would be in the direction of the twist, we would count over six holes and insert in the seventh. Now, what this will do is it'll essentially have our cross already done for when we install the key spoke and the first disc side spoke into the hub. So here we go, I'll just show you. That would be our key spoke, which is on the drive side, and our first disc side spoke on the other side of the valve hole in the rim. And normally you would see the logo, but since we don't have one, we just will keep going and start inserting our first spokes on the drive side. Now I'll show you this because really what's important is the first spokes in this particular style of lacing. So we would count over four holes, insert into the fourth, and now we've started our pattern. I've made many videos on how to lace wheels, so this is less than important at this point. Once you have your three spokes inserted, the pattern will just emerge and really the wheel will lace itself as long as you follow the pattern. And you can do this with one cross, two cross, or three cross. The only difference here being that my method with counting seven holes on the disc side of the hub and inserting that first spoke is it only works with 32 and 36 hole wheels. Now for lower spoke count hubs, I actually have another video and you can check it out right here if I remember to, <laughs> if I remember to place the cards. So now what I'm doing is I'm just I'm gonna show you the quick version. I cut out a lot of the uh, inserting time and spoke nipple turn time, if you will, just so that uh, you can see the, the wheel get built up. I'll also put up a longer version of this where you can see all the work being done, kind of like long division, I guess, for a teacher. <laughs> some people need that and it's easier to follow and some people just digest that information better. So I'll put it up, whether it gets views or not, it doesn't really matter. What matters is the reference material is there. I'm also using that method with the nipple so that I can reach the shorter spokes. Now here we go, we got our first side laced up and we didn't have to twist the hub because it's already twisted since we inserted the first spoke on the disc side already. Now my method here is I just go one spoke at a time and I sort of insert them so that they go through the completed drive side. Now some people are going to say that's wrong and really there's no wrong way to do it other than inserting in the wrong holes. Now I'll just kind of fandangle these guys through the, uh, the drive side spokes and now they're inserted in the disc side and I'll just lace them up as for normal because with the Shimano disc lacing what you're doing is a, a, a mirror lace. So you're mirroring the drive side on the disc side. Now you could, if you wanted to, insert all the first set of the disc side, then you, you don't have to play around with moving them through the rim and past the spokes and all that. But the problem there being is when you insert the second set on the drive side, those spokes will just simply be in the way. And I'm not really interested in that. I can do it my way. You, you can do it whatever way you feel comfortable. And it's a you do you thing. But this is the way I'm showing you. And it, it, it's really the easiest way that I find so that nothing gets in the way. Nothing pokes you or stabs your hand. <laughs> My point being is that sometimes the spokes can stab you and not only do they stab you, but they have uh, threads. So, you know, they can really rip. And what you're seeing here is uh, I'm putting the second set on the disc side, 
really they're just going to slide right through the drive side into the disc side and they can only fit in those holes the proper way and the way that you know is you simply just look at the the heads of the spokes on whichever side and you have to insert the spoke the opposite way and i'll just complete that second set on the disc side and there we go it's already twisted we don't have to worry about the twist we just simply lace our spoke so over over and under because it's a three cross and in this case because i'm using shorter spokes to show you something in the next video i have to use this uh, spoke trick where it jams the nipple down just basically gives you that little extra bit of leverage so that you can uh, lace up the spoke to the nipple and just do it the quick way just gives you an idea of what I'm doing to lace it up and as I said before there's another video that's uh, a longer version so that you can see all the work if you really need to. so here it's done you give it a shake you can see that there's not a whole lot of uh, slack in the spokes which is what I'm looking for in this build because it, it's sort of a teaching build here we go you can see that uh, we're going to be using the drill to tension up so you don't want to miss that video